Hey guys, my name is Kevin. I'm an exercise specialist with the West Primary Care Network. Today we are going to be doing a follow along video um, with myself and my coworker Terry. I'm going to be doing the slightly harder version. She'll do the easier version. We're going to do about 15 repetitions of every exercise. Uh, we're going to be talking about proper form, proper technique as we go through. Um, we only want you to do as many good quality repetitions as you can. So if you can only do eight and at around nine, your, your technique starts to change or something starts to hurt, you don't need to get to 15. I don't want you to do nine good ones and six crappy ones with pain. Just stop at nine. We're going to do 15 because it's halfway between 10 and 20, which anywhere in that range, you'll be good to go. So today we're going to be doing some supersets. So what a superset is, is basically we're working one like muscle group and then immediately after we're going to go in to work a different muscle group. So it's kind of like your legs are resting while we're working our upper body and our upper body is going to get a rest while we work our legs or, or a different muscle group. So um, we're not going to take breaks in between. We're, we're going to go from one exercise right into the other. You'll get a mini break and that's basically just us describing how to do the exercises and appropriate cues. So now let's start by getting into the warm up. So we're gonna get started with a warm up. <clears throat> Come on in, Terry. Okay, so we'll start with a warm up. So the idea behind a warm up, just get started walking on the spot. Um, you can move your arms back and forth, but really just walk on the spot for, probably do this for about three minutes or so. Uh, a little bit longer would probably be ideal, but you only wanna watch us walking on the spot for so long. So feel free to swing your arms, move your arms back and forth. Anything to add? No. No? Okay. So walking on the spot, we'll get into some high knees. So I like to just kind of move right into high knees and march your arms back and forth. Um, purpose of this one is to warm up those hips. So really bring your knee kind of up to the sky as far as it'll go. Um, everyone has a different flexibility level. Some people can go up super high. Some people will only go to here. Go as far as your body will let you. And you can go as fast or as slow as you feel comfortable with as well. Yep. A little faster. Get into some butt kicks, so bring that heel to your bum. Back and forth. Terry likes to do a little arm motion with this one. So get the upper body moving. Heel to bum. And move those arms back and forth. I have a tough time coordinating. Really? Yeah. Mine's just natural. Move not, the arms, move I'm the legs. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, cool. Let's warm up our hips, hip abductors. So, step to the side and step that way, that wow, way. that was a coordination one for me. There we go, now we're dancing. Okay, so this is abduction of the hip. I usually say if you grab your butt muscle, where your thumb is, is the muscle that we're working with this one. And this is just opening and closing those hips, so getting them moving in a lateral direction. If you want to get your shoulders moving, you can do a couple shoulder circles while you're doing this as well. Cool. Probably creeping on two-ish minutes, two and a half. Yeah, I'm starting to feel a little warm. I'm warm enough too. Breathe a little more. You can do some arm swings. If you want to, big circles. Really just move however you want to. Whatever feels good. For a couple minutes. So we'll leave this as like open play time. You can maybe go back and do a couple marches. Walk on the spot, kick your butt, do whatever feels good. First exercise we're gonna do is the sit to stand. Um, so we'll get started with that one in about 30 seconds. You'll wanna have a chair nearby. And yeah, we'll get into that one. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so exercise number one is the sit to stand. So I'm gonna show you 15, you guys follow along with me. I'll talk about form and technique as we go. Arms out in front of you, stand up, sit down. Terry's doing the easier version. So sitting up higher in a chair is easier. The lower the chair is, the harder it is. Keys to this one, squeeze your bum, extend your hips at the top. Uh, it's very easy, everybody recruits their quads. Most people don't have too much trouble using these muscles, lots of people don't use their glutes. Other thing I'm looking for is don't let your knees fall together. Keep those knees out nice and wide. Squeeze butt, extend your hips. How many we got, Terry? This is 14. 
And, and 15. 15. Oh. If you can do a couple more, go for it. Um, the next one we are going to do is the shoulder press. So, two different versions, really just the hard, the heavier weights that I would use, the easier or harder it is. Terry's going to use the elastic band once again, easier or harder band will change. Yeah, so the... I'll show two quick things before we get started. You can either hold the band in front of you, um, you can just change the length for the difficulty with the band and press upwards, or you can put it behind your arm. I like it behind my arm, but just personal preference. I like okay. it in front. Up and down, so when I'm doing the shoulder press with the dumbbell, um, I usually don't go like this or like that, kind of halfway in between, up and down. We should feel this in our shoulders. So it's called your deltoid muscle, uh, right on the tip of your shoulder, down your arm, and a little bit in the back of your upper arm called your tricep as well. Do as many as you can. That's 12, 13. The lighter the weight, the more you can do. The heavier the weight, the less you can do. Okay, so since I'm doing one arm with the band, I'll go ahead and do the other side. And so oh, yeah. anybody who's doing the weights gets a little extra rest. There you go. I've earned myself a rest. So and so I'm... when we're doing the band here, um, I like to let my arm go just a little bit below parallel with my shoulder and then press up again, keeping the band pretty much in line with your ear. It's okay if it's a little forward or a little back, whatever's most comfortable for your shoulder. And I really lost count there, so I'm going to guess that that's 10. Sure, yeah, 10. 11. So lots of people don't have this shoulder mobility. Sometimes people push out like this. Yeah, that's really fine. Just want to go as, as far north as you can, as much up to the sky as you're able to. We don't expect that everyone will be right here. Yeah, definitely. So now we're going to go into our second set of the sit to stands. So get your chair and let's go. Just squeeze your bum, stand on up. Don't let those knees fall together. So supersets are a good way of getting a little bit of cardio in as well as strength training. So the idea is we don't really take a break between one exercise, we go right into the different one. The reason that works is because we're working different body parts. So our lower body is working now, our upper body is resting. And then now that our upper body is more rested and our legs are tired, we're about to go back into the shoulder press. Okay, this is 15. Oh, it's 15. Cool. Okay. Back okay. to the shoulder press. Feel free to pause the video. Doing, especially the first couple of times doing this, might be quite, yeah, you'll get pretty out of breath. So this time I'll do with the shoulder press um, with the band in front. Again, same idea. So just choose whatever is most comfortable for you. You can either do two arms. Technically, you could do one arm at a time. I think maybe if someone has a stronger, like, one side than the other. Maybe I would do like seven pounds on one side, five pounds on the other, that's fine. And that would be a, a reason to do it this way. So hand up to the sky. If you didn't have any pain to start with and you start to develop a little bit of pain, then it's time to stop. Okay. So let's say my left side is a lot less strong than my right. That's what I would do with this side. So when we're doing supersets, the idea is we never stop. Kind of like when you go for a nice long walk, um, you never really stop unless you got to pick up your dog's poop or something. Um, <laughs> but the idea is that you your muscles are working continuously. That's going to get us more out of breath. So that's why doing supersets is kind of a double benefit that you get a benefit from okay, muscle 15, strengthening. 15 there as well as cardio. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is the push forward or chest exercise. So, I'm gonna do the harder version, Terry's gonna do the easier one. Um, I'm gonna do a counter push up. Basically, the higher the countertop, the easier it is. The lower the countertop, such as like kitchen table or something, the harder it is. You can do this on a staircase, like the fourth stair is, is obviously the highest third stair, second, second stair. The lower you go, the harder it is, is the principle. Hands slightly wider than your uh, chest. And then I'm gonna go down and do this. Terry's gonna explain hers. Yeah, and so the next other exercise is the band press. So um, you're just gonna stand here with the band underneath your armpits. The closer you hold to your armpits and the shorter the band is, the harder the exercise will be. And the farther you hold away, the easier the exercise will be. So I'm just gonna press out. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same motion. I'm just using a band 
and Kevin is using the push-up counter. That's five for me. Yep, six. So I like to think about what does your chest muscle do? Your chest muscle's job is to pull your arm bones together. So as you push forward, think about your arm bones coming closer together. That helps me use my chest. For me in the push-up, it's okay for your heels to come off the ground. I would actually say that they should. Okay, so I think that was about 15. Cool. Okay. So the next one we're gonna do is the standing row is what, what it's called. So we're pulling backwards and squeezing our shoulder blades together. Um, so optimally, um, I do love this one standing. If you have somewhere to anchor it, we're just gonna anchor it onto like a railing, a pillar in your basement. If you have a treadmill or a bike or anything sturdy to anchor this on, today Kevin's gonna be my pillar, but first he's just gonna show the seated version for anyone who has nowhere to anchor it. Yeah, so he's using his foot as the anchor for the band. So same idea, you're pulling back, pulling your elbows backwards, squeezing your shoulder blades together, but the foot is my anchor. Um, we'll have that playing along in the top corner. For Terry, I'm just gonna hold the band as if it's uh, around a treadmill or something like that. Okay, great, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soften my knees so I'm nice and sturdy, and I'm gonna pull back, squeeze my shoulder blades together. Essentially, if I had a pencil between my shoulder blades, I'd wanna squeeze it every time I pull back. So I'm just gonna soften and we're gonna get started. So this one, basically the farther away you walk from your anchor point, the harder it's gonna be. Um, the minimum distance away is just as you see when Terry's arms go straight, there's still a little bit of tension in the band. So you wanna be far enough away that the tension is always there just a little bit. And then the farther back you go, the harder it is. Uh, 13, 14, 15, all Great. right. So that is the standing or seated row. Now we're gonna go back to our second set of the push-ups. So, you get that. Um, go back to your counter and let's get started. Okay. So think about squeezing your chest. Let your heels come up off the ground. Keep your belly tight if you're doing my version. It's kind of like you're doing a moving plank a little bit. Um, and keep breathing. Don't feel like you have to make it to 15. You just do as many as you're comfortable doing. Oftentimes on the second round, um, you're a little bit more tired than you were on the first go round. So it's 14 and 15. Okay. So I'll give Kevin a chance to try the row and see if I can hang on for this one. <laughs> harder, <laughs> harder than it looks. So, um, I like to sit back a little bit, soft knees, pull backwards, squeeze your shoulder blades together. So two, three. I like to pretend like there's a string on the back of my elbows. Lots of people try to pull with their hands like this. Think about a string pulling on the back of the elbow and your forearms are just kind of following along for the ride. Pull back, squeeze your shoulder blades together. String on the elbow, squeeze the shoulders together. That's like 11, 12, is that right? I think so. 13, 14, and I'm getting out of breath. Yeah, I'm just focusing on not letting go and letting the band hit you. <laughs> Thanks. So you can hit pause, grab a quick drink of water if you need to. Um, next, we're gonna move into the step ups. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is the step up. So I'm doing the harder version, Terry's doing the easier version. Quite easy, basically the higher the step, the uh, harder it is. I'd start with as little as four inches, and then six inches is harder, eight inches, 10 inches. And really like the sky's the limit, you can go as high as you want to. Uh, but 10 inches beyond that, it's kind of like, what's the point? You're never mm -hmm. really gonna need to do that. Yeah, and so if you don't have a step thing like this at home, you can do, use the bottom stair of the staircase, maybe like a stack of books if you put it somewhere stable, or like a step stool. Step stool are great. Okay. So we're gonna need about squeezing our butt and stand on up. Whichever foot is on the step is the one doing the work. So I like to put my hand on my butt, squeeze your butt and extend your hip. So if it's my right leg that's working, Terry's left, and extend your hip. Other thing I'm looking for is keep the knee in alignment. 
Um, you can actually put your foot, whoop, I'm getting off balance. There, so don't let that knee cave inwards like this. I don't want that happening. Keep knee in alignment. Okay, and that's 15 on that side. Right on, so we're just gonna switch legs to the other side because the leg that's not on the step is really passive. It's not doing a whole lot of work. So basically while your one leg is working, your other leg is resting. Another thing to mention here is that Kevin and I both have great balance, but if your balance isn't quite as good, please hang on for balance. Use a railing, put a chair in front of you. Anything to hold on for balance. It's usually needed for this exercise. Really the more, yeah, the more you hold on, the more we can actually focus on strength. If you're doing the exercise like this, you're not really recruiting the right muscles. So we do encourage actually holding on, as long as you're not pulling. Okay, and that's 15, I think. <laughs> Great. Okay. okay, we'll go back to the first, uh, whichever leg you did first again. So that leg, squeeze your butt, extend your hip. So two joints are working here, your hip and your knee joint. You're extending your hip and you're extending your knee. So butt muscle and quad muscle. Only do as many as you can. If you start to feel a little bit of pain uh, or just don't feel like you're doing it properly anymore, then take a break and stop. 13. Okay, that's and 15 on that side. Great, so we'll switch legs. Oh, it's getting out of breath. Yeah, you can't <laughs> breath too. Okay, so other side, squeeze butt, step on up. Anytime you need to take a break, just hit that pause button. Step up and extend that hip. Good. One thing too, this is a little bit more rare, but realistically some people, well actually quite often, some people have a good leg and a bad leg. You could do like six inches on your good leg and maybe four inches on your bad leg or even eight and four. People often think they need to have equal strength on both sides. You don't, feel free to challenge each side appropriately. Okay, so now we're gonna move into the plank, bird dog, and glute bridge. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is the bird dog. So I'm gonna do the floor version, Terry's gonna do the standing version of the bird dog, so pitch, pick whichever is appropriate for you. Um, basically, tabletop position on your hands and knees. I tell people, keep your back nice and flat, um, it's okay if it moves a little bit, but overall I don't want people kind of going around like this. And the way I typically teach it is push one leg out behind you, opposite out in front of you, and then squeeze your fist and um, tighten every muscle from your hand all the way down to your foot. And then we're going to do the opposite side. Okay, and then same thing for the counter one. We're going to start at the counter, leaning into it a little bit, one leg back, opposite arm forward. Again, trying to keep your hips nice and stable, no twisting and turning. Um, yeah, so very, very similar exercise. So we'll, do, we'll hold it for about five to 10 seconds per side and do about five to 10 per side. Go ahead. Okay. So I usually tell people suck in your belly button, harden your belly muscles, and back down. Suck in belly, harden belly muscles, keep your back nice and flat. If you find that you're very wobbly or you can't coordinate on this and it's your first couple of times, feel free to just do your leg first and then bring your hand out and it's normal to be shaky and wobbly. You're gonna get better the more of this you do. And we're alternating sides. Key note, you're not doing your right leg and your right arm, it's very important. If you <laughs> that do that, you'll fall over. And I find if you lift your leg too much, either on the standing or the flow, it really just, or floor, it just really throws you off kilter. So just be mindful of that if you feel really off balance. Are you reaching too far with your leg? Make a fist and squeeze every muscle from your hand all the way down to your foot. That should increase your stability and support in your core, your arms, and your legs. How many are we doing? You know, I, I don't really know what we're at. I'm gonna guess we're at least like six per side, but maybe just do a couple more and then we'll... Yeah. I can feel my muscles getting tired. You only wanna do as many as you can with good form. This is one people tend to tire out pretty quickly. I'm getting tired, we'll do one more. Okay. I'm equal on both sides, so I'll stop there. Okay, cool. <laughs> So that is the bird dog kneeling, uh, kneeling position or standing. So the next one we're gonna do is the plank. So I'll do the kneeling version, Terry will do the counter. 
So the way I teach this one, all the way down to the ground, elbows directly underneath your shoulder, leave your knees on the ground, lift your hips up about six inches. Usually what I tell people, suck in your belly button, harden your belly muscles before you lift. So suck in, harden, lift, and then we're just gonna hold that for as long as we can. So for the easier version of this is the counter plank. And so the higher the surface, the easier it will be. So if you want to get in between, you can always go to a slightly lower uh, counter or maybe a table. So for this one, you're going to put your elbows onto the counter or table, walk your legs back, lift your heels off the ground so you don't get just a crazy calf stretch and get into a nice straight line, straight like a plank or a board. So the timer. Okay, so I'm going to set a timer here. Um, so we can get started in five seconds, three, two, one, go ahead. So we'll suck in the belly button, harden the belly muscles and keep on breathing. You should not feel any pain in your back muscles. 10 seconds. Or in your back period. Um, and it's pretty normal to only be able to hold this one for 10 to 30 seconds. That's all you really have to hold it for. It's 20 seconds. And um, other thing to keep in mind is keep your shoulder over top of your elbow. So if you're having any shoulder pain, especially 30. if you're doing the floor version, maybe you switch over to doing Terry's version, but really whatever your limiter is, that's fine. So if you can, if your shoulder limits you in how, many, how much of this you can do, that's fine. Then we're just gonna work on increasing the strength of the shoulder. Okay, that's 50 seconds. So we keep on sucking in the belly button. Remember heart to and belly keep muscles, breathing. And keep breathing. Coming up on 60. That's one minute. So we'll keep going to 1.30, but only go as long as you can. If you need to take a break, take a break. Grab some water. So we're at one minute and 10 seconds. 115. Shaking muscles is normal and that's good. Challenge yourself as much as you can. 10 more seconds. 125. Oh. In a minute 30. Okay. Oh, that was a hard one. Good job. Okay. Next one, we'll move into the glute bridge. Okay, so this next one is the glute bridge. So I'm going to do the harder version. Terry's going to do the easier version. Um, so for the glute bridge setup, lie down on your back. You can do this on your bed. It's not as ideal. Bring your feet close to your bum, as close as you can get them. I usually say that are even on both sides. And then from here, we're gonna squeeze our butt, push your hips up to the sky. So that is, and then hold for about five seconds on each one. My version is the harder version. Only do this if you can do the regular one comfortably. But basically, I'm gonna super squeeze my left butt cheek. And it's giving me my left butt that does most of the work to bring me up to the sky. So really, it should look the same. If I'm using two, it looks like this. I'm using my right, it looks like this. If I'm using my left, it looks like that. So you really can't tell um, that much. I want your hips to stay level. Um, yeah, and you can really hold it from anywhere between three and five seconds. I haven't been holding it so far. I've been holding a little. I like to just really focus and make sure you get a really good contraction at the top. So that can happen in one, two, three, four, five seconds, whatever you need to really feel it. Yeah. And I only go as high as my bum will lift me. At a certain point, you're just arching your back, which is not really what we're aiming to do here. We're just lifting and squeezing with the bum. And I'm pretty confident I've done at least 15. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we'll take a little breather. Uh. Okay, we'll get into our second set of the planks. So assume your position. Okay, I'll start the timer in three seconds. Two, one, go ahead. So suck in your belly button, harden your belly muscles, and keep breathing. If you want to try the harder version of mine, it's all the way from your feet. It is very hard. Usually if you can do 90 seconds worth of one, I usually find people can get about seconds. 15 seconds of the next one. So only do whichever, don't do both. Either do the kneeling or do the full plank. It's 25 seconds. I'll see if I can hold out a full plank. 30. So suck in belly button, harden belly muscles, keep breathing. Oh, this is hard. 40 seconds, yeah, planks are really hard. Oh, so I always man. time the planks because you never count faster than when you're doing a plank. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so we're at 
50 seconds. Remember, suck in belly button, harden belly muscles, keep breathing. As you can see, I'm starting to shake, so even the professionals shake, so that is normal. So that's one minute. Full time to one minute and 30 seconds, but if you're getting tired, feel free to take a break at any time. So one minute and 10 seconds. 115. Oh, I'm getting shaky. <laughs> 120, me too. If you have any back pain, stop. I don't want you to pursue that. 125. Three, two, one. Oh. All right. Oh, nice work on that one. <laughs> right on. And last but not least, we're going to do the glute bridge. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do round two. So um, give your uh, butt a little bit of a rest and we'll get into it again. For anyone doing my version, you can maybe do like six on your left and six on your right. We'll get into it. So for me, I'm doing my left butt now, back down. Like Terry said, it's not really about how long you hold it, it's about getting a good contraction in the butt and not having a hamstring cramp basically when you do it. If you do get hamstring cramps on this one, I really like to emphasize squeeze your bum muscle before you lift up off the ground. Sometimes when people don't do that, that's when their hamstring cramps and honestly, I usually find as soon as you have one hamstring cramp, uh, it's probably going to cramp up immediately after, no matter what you do. So I've had a couple of people that are very sensitive to that. Yeah, I do find over time that once you get a bit stronger and are better able to, to contract those glutes, the hamstring cramps come a lot less. Absolutely, because you learn to use your glutes instead of your hammies. <laughs> Absolutely. Good. I'm on okay. three on my right side, so I'll do just two or three more. I feel like I've done a million. My bum is getting very sore. <laughs> If we feel like this. <laughs> and one more for me. Perfect. All right. Great. So that is the second set of the glute bridge. Um, yeah, that's it for today. That's the whole uh, round of um, core exercises. Thanks for sticking with us. Yeah. Thanks for watching.